got your Bibles, see if you can find Ephesians chapter 6. And after you find Ephesians chapter 6, you can find 2 Chronicles chapter 20. But I'm going to begin to read in Ephesians chapter 6, starting verse 10. This message is to the church today. <clears throat> Many of us go through, seems like one battle right after another. Seems like there's always something trying to pull us down and get us defeated and get us discouraged, get us where we feel like it, we're not doing much. I am so glad that everybody sung in the Spirit this morning. That is so important, so important. If you come up here and just bang around with a song and the Spirit ain't in it, brother, you're just wasting God's time. But man, when you sing in the Spirit, yes. and Brother Smith, you're stuck now, buddy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. The whole message hinges basically on verse 10. It says, Finally, my brother, not to the lost, not for the dying world, but my brethren. When we go through this world, Satan hates you if you're saved. Satan hates you with a passion. And he'll do every deceitful thing that he can to get in your mind and get in your heart and try his best to pull you away any way he can. He's had 6,000 years to practice on you now, so he's pretty good at it. So here's what we got to do. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Amen. Not in yourself. Amen. Strong in the Lord. Church, I'm finding, looking through Facebook and online on things, that Christian people are getting weaker and weaker, and they're laying down their armor, and they're not doing like they used to do. And it saddens me. I can understand some of these young people that have so many temptations. But when you see 40 and 50 year old people that have once held up the bloodstained banner and now they've fallen by the wayside, something's wrong. Our prayer life has not get where we used to be. Our reading of God's Word is not where it used to be. And we're falling. And we can't afford that. Too many people are watching our lives. Too many people are seeing us day by day pull in the parking lot. And we cannot allow Satan to cause us to slip not one iota. If we do, it discourages them. And they feel like, I can't go there. Look at what it says. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of His might, put on, that means you've got to do it, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That's a prince of Satan. Against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, 
against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in evil days and have done all to stand, stand. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before you to thank you, dear God, for this day. Thank you for every song that was sung. Thank you for sending us Brother Smith. We appreciate him, Lord. Dear God, we ask that your spirit would abide in this place in such a way. Lord, that sometimes we couldn't even stand up because of the power of God. And when we stand up, we glorify you and we honor you. Lord, there's none of us here that's perfect, but we're striving towards perfection. And we need you, dear God. We sing to you today, dear God, and we glorify your name. And I praise you and I glorify you and I honor you. So today, Lord, help us to put on the whole armor of God that we can stand against everything that Satan finds against us. For dear God, we sure need help today. We Amen. praise you. We glorify you. We honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And amen and amen. amen. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, if you would. Show you a situation. You know, sometimes I bring out that armor out here. And I've got that shield of faith in the back if you want to see it sometime. And I've got a buckler. I've got swords in here that I can show you. But what I want you to understand today, and Wilkie has preached this for years, we've got to have the armor of faith. We can't allow anything to pull us down. We've got to have enough faith to stand against everything that comes against us. And I know Satan likes to whisper in our ear. He likes to get our mind all twisted up. He likes to get situations going and Oh, he'll, he'll, I guarantee you, flip on the TV, he'll flip something up there that you don't need to see. Gets in your head, don't it? And you have a time getting it out. <laughs> well, look what happened here in the 20th chapter of 2 Chronicles to a king. To a king now. This is a king. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon with them and others besides the Amorites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea of this side of Syria, and behold, they be from uh, Hazazonatarim, which is an Engadi. Do you know that Satan will always bring you bad news? He won't bring you no good news. He'll always bring you bad news. He'll always try to put something in your head to, to make you think that you're defeated. That you can't do this. That you can't sing. That you can't praise the Lord. That you can't honor God. That you can't lift your voice. He'll do anything He can to get you to sit down and shut up. Praise God. Ain't it time we stood up and took a stand and say I'm a child of Almighty God and I will not be defeated and I will not stop and I will not back up. I'm going forward for the glory of God. Yes, Satan has fought against me this week. Yes, praise God, he put things in my mind. But thank God I'm still standing for the glory of God and I will not be moved and I shall not shut up and I will not quit. Thank God we are two the mightiest overcomers that this country knows if we'll just stand for what God has put in us and if we'll hold on to that and dig in deeper, the devil cannot take it away from you. I'm going to be long-winded today, so you might as well hang up. Look what it said. Jehoshaphat feared. Alright. Fear comes, don't it? Jehoshaphat feared, verse 3, and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judea. Sought to seek the Lord. Wow! Sometimes trouble comes. Sometimes storms rise. 
Sometimes things gets in our mind and, and we get so discouraged and we get so uptight and the last thing we think of is that I've tried my best to get over this. I've tried my best to get through this. On the last little go around, we'll say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. That ought to be the first thing we go to. That ought to be the first thing we say. When Satan gets in your head and starts working on your mind, you need to raise your hands right out in the public and say, I'm a child of the Most High God, and Father, I need you to come to my rescue because I can't do this by myself. And I fail to do that sometimes. I sit there and I let the devil woo me all over the place, and I know better. We need to get a hold of what we used to have and build it up instead of pushing it down and let the devil know I'm not going to put up with this any longer. I am a child of the Most High God and I will not quit and I'm moving forward to the glory of God. Whoa! Look at this. Verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. He says something. He said, Oh Lord God, of our Father. Art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathens? And in thine hands is there not power and might so that none, none is able to withstand thee. None. Nothing can keep you from being a child of God. Nothing can keep you from enjoying all the blessings of God. Nothing can. Because if you're a child of God, you are heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. You have more power in your voice to say praise the Lord than all the demons in hell have got because you are an overcomer through the blood of Jesus Christ and the devil hates you but thank God God loves you and He's holding you up and He's keeping you and He's guiding you and He's directing you and you've got power, power, wonder working power in the name of Jesus. If you use it, if you use it, whoo, man, Verse 7 says, Are not thou, O God, our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land and before this people Israel and give us it to be seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And they dwell therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name's sake. If when evil comes upon us as a sword, as judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in this presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our afflictions, then thou will hear and help. Man, church, we're too quiet. We're sitting around and the devil is wearing us out. All week long, he's plowing a trench and he's trying to push us in it. And he's bringing up things in the past that Jesus has done for God but gave us for. He's trying his best to bring something up that disturb you and get you tore up, get your mind rattled. He wants to do everything He can to stop you from being in the house of God or to maybe talk to somebody that's lost and undone without the mercy of God. He's doing anything. Tell me I'm, tell me, tell me I'm lying. Am I lying? Huh? Satan is on the job 24 hours a day. Then thank God we as the children of God need to be our soul on our bed doing what God wants us to do 365 and one fourth day out of the year and we don't need to stop. We don't need to slow down. We need to keep praising God with everything that's in us because we've got the power to overcome this entire world if we'll hang on and keep moving forward. Man. We'll take me some time. If you get tired, you just go home. And I'll stay right here. Yeah. 
Is this thing too, too loud? I don't want to bust anybody's eardrum. Verse 10 says, Now, behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of our possession, yeah. our possession which thou hast given us to inherit. Yeah. You hear me, church? Oh, let me tell you something, church. The devil wants to take your inheritance away. He don't want you to be blessed. He don't want you to shout the victory. He don't want you to sing about the glory of God. He don't want you to have a good time in church. He wants you to sit there like a knot on a log and just keep your mouth shut and don't do nothing. But praise God, as long as I've got two arms, they're going to go in the air. I'm going to glorify God. I'm going to praise Him. The devil might have really get off my back because I ain't got time to do it. I'm a child of the most high God and He belongs in my life and I'm going to keep Him in my life. I mean, I'm going to keep Him close in my life. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Oh. Verse 12 says, O oh, Lord God, wilt Thou not judge? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon yes. Thee. Oh, Satan says to you all the time, or he does me, you ain't got no power. You ain't got nothing. You're just a whip pup, and you can't do nothing. I tell you what I can do. I can spit right in his eye and tell him I'm born again child of God. And he might go forget. But Paul, I go through the trials. I go through the tribulation. I go through the heartache. I don't stay in them. I go through them and I get out of them because I've got a power, power that knows exactly how to come in my life. He knows exactly how to move through me. He knows exactly what I need. Thank God for the power of God. Thank God for the power of God. Lord. Now watch verse 13. And all Judea stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. Read me. I'm sorry I moved around so much, but I can't be still. All of Judah stood before the Lord. What if? What if we was going through a great trial in the church? And situations was rising. And all the real war veterans, I'll say, that stood in the gap all this time decided to sit down and not say anything about what's going on in the church. Those that's weak and weary, they would begin to start falling by the wayside because the strong ones are not able to hold the banner high enough that they can follow after it. Let me tell you what, church. I don't care if you just got saved yesterday. You've got more power than I have. Let me say it again. If you just got saved yesterday, you've got more power than I have. Why? Because you just realized the saving grace of God has come in your life and washed you clean and there's no sin in you and you're able to fight against the devil without any problem whatsoever. We need to make sure that we're exactly where God needs us to be all the time. Amen. Oh, and I fail in that sometimes. Do you? Yeah. Tell me the truth. I do. Yeah. Look. Then Jehazel was so Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, and Levi, of the sons of Asaph, 
came the Spirit of the Lord into the midst of the congregation. Wait a minute. Did you see that? Let me read the last part of 14 again. Came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Yes, sir. Right in the when Brother Smith was singing this morning, all of you did good. I love every song. Yes. But when he sang, yeah. all I could do was cry. Yes. How great thou art. Yes. How great thou art. How great is the God that we serve. The God that I'm serving. He's all power. There's no lack in my God. I don't know about yours, but there's no lack in my God. He has all the power that I ever need in this life. I hope when they lay me in a casket and roll me up here wherever I'm at, I hope I shake the things pieces. <laughs> I hope the power of God just shakes it plumb to pieces. We ought to be the most yes. joyful, happiest yes. people on the face of the earth because one day Jesus looked down on your sinful life and seen that you was headed for a devil's hell and he wrenched his hand of mercy down and he rescued you. He pulled you out of sin's darkness and he brought you into the light of God and he changed your life and he gave you overwhelming peace. He wrote your name in the land book of life. Thank God, thank God. You're a chosen, chosen, chosen child of Almighty God and the devil can't do a thing in the world about it unless you allow it to be done. Amen. Man. Verse 15. And he said, Hearken ye all Judea. All. That means we've got to always be together. We've got to pull together. We've got to shout together. We've got to sing together. We've got to be together. Do you notice the Spirit of God is here today in such a wonderful way? Man, that's the way it needs to be every time. We get the mully grubs and we say, I don't think I go to church today. I feel so bad. It's a pity. What if every singer and every pastor and every assistant pastor and every musician stayed home? You hear a pin drop in here, wouldn't you? Oh, but I ain't staying home. The devil can't run me off neither. Right. And he said, Hearken ye all Judea and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Who? For the battle is not yours, but God's. Can you say amen? amen. The devil thought that he was going to destroy you. I'm thinking back of a little while ago that Ronnie and Tim, Tim was supposed to to be crippled for life. God said, no. Look at that big old healthy boy. They started coming in. Ron came in. Big Tim came in. Becky came in. I said, you want to be baptized back here in the baptistry? No, I want to go to the creek. I want to do like John the Baptist. Boy, you're talking about a day of glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, when you get out there and you get baptized in that creek, the devil's watching. Oh. And he says, uh-oh, uh-oh, I've lost it. Yeah. I've lost this battle. Yes. <laughs> Look at the soul sitting here that God has pulled out of the fires of hell right. on the way to destruction. But here comes the hand of God, and He says, "Uh-uh, -oh, mine. they're mine." Yes. <laughs> when He reaches down that body hand, don't forget about it. Right. 
Build on it. Amen. If God brought you out of darkness and set you into the marvelous light of God, then you need to be shouting the victory every time you get a change. You need to read that Bible from cover to cover till it wires out. I'll get you done. We need to press forward, church. We ain't got time to slow down now. Look what it says, verse 16. Tomorrow, go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliffs of Zid, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. You ready? You shall not need to fight in this battle. Amen. Set yourself. That's it. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Let me read that again. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. With you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. I want to say something right here. It's burning in my soul. We sit back, we hump up, and the devil comes along and he says, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to put evil thoughts in your mind. I'm going to do my best to just absolutely take you down. And we sit there, and the Lord said, get up and do something. Yeah. We sit there. Yeah. Here he is. He's telling King Jehoshaphat, don't you sit there. Don't let that enemy come into the camp where you are. I want you to go. I want you to get that congregation together. I want you to go down to the cliffs of Ziz. And you stand there and watch the mighty hand of God. Yes. See what God does. Oh, look at this. Verse 18, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of Kohath, say how you pronounce that, and of the children. Anyway, verse 20. Mess me with that. Verse 20. And they rose early in the morning. And went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went forth. Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. I think you ought to Put that on your refrigerator right there, verse 20. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed a bunch of preachers to go with him. Is that what it says? What does this say there? I was watching that uh, 1999 Christmas play, and if I ain't mistaken, Bert, I heard something right along about here. I think I heard a and I seen the back of his head just to bounce him one right down here. Thank you, Lord. Boy, you remember that day when Satan had you entangled so deep that there seemed like there was no hope out. And you said, Lord Jesus, come into my life and save my soul. And all of a sudden, something broke loose. Satan had to turn loose. He, he had a good hold on you, he thought. But Jesus stepped between you and the devil. He said, this is mine. This is mine. Oh, I remember that day. July 23rd, 1972, when Jesus stepped in between the devil. He said, no, that's as far as you go. And brother, I'm telling you what, the washing power of the Son of God came in my life and 
wash my sins away. Away. I hear them all the time when they come to this hour. They said, I felt a heavy load leave. Man, that's what it is. Satan wants to put the heavy load back on you, church. Shake it off in the name of Jesus. There ain't enough demons in hell can do a thing when you start claiming the name of Jesus. Pauline Collins said, Robert Charles was sitting there. And I said, Pauline, what do you say? She said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> We've got to use that name, folks. We've got to be bold enough to spit it out in the devil's face and say, I'm a child of God. Get off my back and leave me alone. Look what it says. Oh, verse 21, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the armies and to say, here's what they said. Praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Can you hear that ringing off the hills of Judea? Praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambush against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were, what's that word? Smitten. Smitten. And all they was doing is singing. But how you sing makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Anybody can sing a tune. But boy, when you sing in the Spirit, when you praise the Lord in the Spirit, when you glorify His name in the Spirit, I'm telling you what, you can just about imagine the devil just backing up, backing up, backing up. I told you with that armor I've got back there how they would, the Roman Empire would take and when they'd get in a hot battle, they would all hook them together. And they'd hunker down and all the arrows would just either go into the armor or fly over. The shield of faith will absolutely put the devil to flight. He can't stand a real, true, born-again child of God. Now, he can, he can work on some of these wishy-washy people that says, I go to church. I've been going to church 30 years. But are you saved? Yeah. Are you born again? Is the blood of Jesus living in your soul? If not, you need to come to the hour. Get saved. Yeah. I tell you, almost being saved ain't the same thing at all. Oh. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord sent ambush against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which came against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon... And Moab stood up against the inhabitants on Mount Seir until to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. Now I'm going to read verse 24 in a minute. Don't you understand something? When you're weak, I better be strong. And when I'm weak, you better be strong. When your brother is going through a trial or tribulation, you better be praying for them. Yeah. And I don't mean, Lord, have mercy on them. Yeah. I mean, you better be praying for them. Yeah. We had two pages when Vivian was going here in Glenn. We had two pages of healings that the Lord had done in this church. You should probably just give up writing. There's just too many to keep up with. Ain't that so? Yeah. Too many healings to keep up with. Folks, we don't know what God can do yet. We just, we just sampled yeah. a little of God's power. We, we ain't really endeavored to get into the, the fullness of what God can do. What I'd like to see, I'd like to see Him bring them in here in wheelchairs and walkers. Yes before church starts 
And I'd like to see this congregation come through that door and the power of God come through that door with them and rebuke everyone sitting in a wheelchair and everyone on a walker and they have to jump up and run around the podium where God has moved. We can do that. I said we can do that if we have the faith to believe it. Is there anything that God can't do? That's my question. <laughs> I don't know of anything that my God can't do. Verse 24, I'll try to hush. Man's been a good spirit here today. Yes. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked upon the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. They wore jewelry and come to fight Israel. Or Judah. You know what it took them three days yeah. to gather all the things off of the dead bodies? You know what they did on the fourth day? All of Judah bowed down and praised the Lord. Yes. All of Judah bowed down and praised the Lord on the fourth day. Maybe this is the fourth day for us. All right. Maybe we need to get on our knees. Yeah. And forget about our pride. Forget about who's sitting beside of us and what they'll think about us. And maybe we need to get back to where we started and just start over and let the power of God move. Brethren, take unto you the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6, yes, verse 10 says. You have to get a hold of it to take it. Amen. You have to put it on. You have to hold it close to you. Come on, Henry. God bless you, brother. Church, would you stand? We'll do it, brother. We'll do it. All right, brother. Henry's needing prayer. Now, Brother Smith, you're just here for the first time. You come on up here and join us. We're going to pray. Give us an hour call, ladies. Sing a song. If you're watching by Facebook and you don't know Jesus and you think this is just a, a show of some kind, I'm here to tell you this is real. The power of God is very, very real. And you don't need to live in darkness and you don't need to live by your wits. You need to be living by the power of saving grace God. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus has come on this earth to seek and to save that which is lost. So if you're watching by Facebook and you don't know Jesus, let me tell you how easy it is. Fall down on your knees, say, Lord Jesus, come into my life and save my soul. I'm lost and I need a Savior. With your full, complete heart, pour your heart out to Him on every sin that you can remember and ask Him to forgive you of all your sins. And when you feel that heavy load lift, and it will lift, yes. and you rise up, you go tell somebody that you just got saved and find you a Bible-believing, full Bible-believing church. Yes. And you get in here and you serve God because when you said, Jesus, come in my life, He's not only coming in your life, He's coming after you in the resurrection. So be ready. Amen. 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 Whatever you need today, let's get on this altar. And let's come to God and just ask Him to pour His Spirit out on us that we can ever be vessels that He can use for the rest of our lives. Come on, let's pray. Let's get on this altar. We'll come back and pray for you in just a minute. We need to get on this altar. We need to pour our hearts out to God. We need to get so deep in the Spirit of God that it's amazing what God can do. I'm here to tell you, We've just tasted a little sample of God's power so far. I want Him to shake this building. I want Him to shake every soul in it. I want Him to really get a hold of us like He needs to. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We need the power of God in our life. Yes, we need the power of God in our life. We need the overwhelming power of God in our life. We need everything God has offered to us. We need to have it. Come to Jesus and let him wash your sins away. Oh, Father, thank you, Master. Whatever you need today, pour it out on this altar.
God hears. He knows. All about us. There's nothing that He don't know about. I have to say something before we pray for Henry. Uh, this world's got so much turmoil in it. And we all turn to God in times of need, me included. I beg people to pray. I want prayers. But uh, what James was preaching today just hit just what God was already giving me. It's just, I just feel that this is the time to realize 
that God is never unfaithful. No. And if his, all, if the Bible says all his promises are yes and amen, that's what he means. But on the flip side, I can't dishonor God with my life and expect the blessings of God. No. Come on. Bless the Lord. And so when we're crying out and something uncontrolled, we say this must have been God, the, all, all this disasters go on, and, and there's so much, you know, you don't want anything to come on your family. I don't want anything to come on my, we don't want anything. We want to walk in the blessing. We want to Amen. live in the blessing. Yes. Sure we want to stay in the blessing. Yes. But uh, the body of Christ sometimes acts like there's no responsibility of ours because everything's under the blood and we can act and do what we think and, and just go on and that's just part of me. No. I have to repent. Yes. I do too. Yes. I do too. Yes, I do. Yes. Yes. This guy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And we don't realize the, what the weight of sin and the consequences of <coughs> sin causes in our yeah. life. And the remedy most of the time for the things going on wrong in my life is me repenting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But pride will keep us away from repentance. Yeah. It's the way out. It's the way that God has already provided to us to get to where we need to be. Yes, sir. Yes. The things that are blocking the blessings of God is not God, it's Wilkie Sailor in my life. Yes. Yes. Because all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. Yes. And we've been conditioned as a church society, I'm sorry, but if it didn't happen, it must have not been God's will. Uh -huh. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. No, God's promises are true. Yeah. He's constant. Yes, he, he is. He loved, while we were yet sinners, you know, Christ died for them, God. Yeah. Yes. His love for us has never, ever let up. Mm -mm. But he told them a long time ago, to them that honor me, I will honor. Mm -hmm. yes. For those that dishonor me, I will lightly esteem. That's the word of God, folks. Amen. Yeah. That God, God wants us to live a life. We can't be worthy. We understand that. But when we're doing our part to say, I want to honor him with my speech, with Amen. my walk, yeah. with my talk, Amen. with not, not to impress him no. or him no. or anybody else, but you get God-minded, yeah. God inside. Yeah. You want to honor yeah. God. Yeah. Then we can leave a legacy. James was talking about things were falling by the wayside, and that's bearing such a witness with me today. Yeah. There are things that are happening that ain't God's will in your life Amen. right now. Amen. There's things that can be happening right now that may not be God's will in my life. Bless but there's the things, ways we can get to that yeah. if we're willing yes. to say yes. it's me. That's right. And bend yeah. my yeah. knees yeah. to God yeah. and with all intent repent. Amen. Amen. There's yeah. repentance yeah. from the mouth Yes. But there's an intent of the heart. Amen. And God's Amen. looking at the intent of my heart and your heart, yes. right? He's yes. when we repent, it needs to be a godly sorrow. Yes. yes. And that godly sorrow will bring us to the place where God will get glory out of our lives. That's right. And we'll come in here one mind and one accord. And the Holy Ghost, He does yes. His thing, yes. right? Yes. Because He wants to get involved. But yes. He's yes. sent he here. Yes, He is. To be involved Amen. in every service Amen. in every walk of life outside of these doors. It didn't say go ye into all the churches. It says go ye into all the world. Sure. We come, but we come here as, as a corporate body and we sing yeah. for the glory of God. And we do for God and we preach this and we receive yes. this word with gladness. Yes. And say it's me. Oh yes, I need to repent here and there. So that being said, when we lay hands on the sick, we need to have an expectation. Amen. Because yes. Jesus said, the head of the church, right before he ascended, he didn't come out and say, whoa, slow down, y'all believing too much. He didn't say that. No. Right? He said that believers, when they lay hands on the sick, what happens? Shall recover. Now, sometimes you just never know is not a scripture. No. But it's quoted like one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when we start believing what God says, boy, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, man, it's good. Results. It's what my God's about. Amen. We got walk and talk with testimonies of results in this Amen. church. Amen. Will you believe? 
Yes. You receive. Amen. 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 And it's for his glory. Yes, not is. mine, uh -uh. not your. Amen. His glory. Amen. God be glorified. Now let's lay hands on the sick with expectation. Before, before we do, we'll, yes, you, know, you know, something I was thinking about the other day. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd slipped up to everybody where mm -hmm. I was pit, and then mm -hmm. it just hit me what I'd really done. Uh -huh. I was no more. different than a Roman guard going up and punching Jesus right in mm -hmm. the face because mm -hmm. that's what he died mm -hmm. for. Because ever since, and he saved us from that. He saved us so from it. we sin, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then that's we have the same thing. He, had, he suffered for ever since. He did. we commit, mm -hmm. we're putting pain or have put pain in him. Mm -hmm. And that's why look, we hurt. I mean, imagine how bad we hurt him. Mm -hmm. Hit him with cat down his head. Yes. Mm -hmm. or, or punch him while he's blind. Mm -hmm. It's like that song says, that soldier was me. Yeah. 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 And that's, yeah. yeah. hit me like yes. a ton of rocks. All right. Praise the Lord. And Father, in the name of every name, Lord, the sweet name of Jesus, dear Lord, Henry has needs this morning. He has needs in his body. God, you are the one that needs in this body. Lord, we just ask you in this name of Jesus. Lord, you would move these afflictions from you. Heal his body, heal his soul, his spirit, his God, and let the power of God be manifest here. Oh, in this creation that you have created in nature, God, let your spirit move in you in a mighty, glorious, wonderful way. In Jesus' the name we pray. Yes, oh, thank you for the healing power. Thank you for the healing power. We need that today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.